The first African-American man to face murder charges in a U.S. courtroom was arraigned in 1868. Surprisingly, the all-white jury delivered a stunning result. Charles Caldwell, an African-American civil rights activist, is the subject of today's discussion. His deeds were pivotal in making black history what it is today, early life in the shadows of slavery. Charles Caldwell was born into slavery in Hines County, Mississippi, in the early 1830s. As a child, he heard shackles rattling around the house as often as he heard cotton being raked in the fields. Caldwell shared in the hardships endured by slaves in the Mississippi River Valley, a region renowned for its cotton fields. The slave state of Mississippi was among the most notorious in the United States. Slave African Americans worked the enormous cotton plantations that dot the countryside, which were vital to the economy. Slaves were subjected to brutal circumstances on these estates. As they worked in the fields for extended periods of time, overseers were constantly watching them. Slaves had no legal rights, and the social order was designed to crush any indication of defiance or uprising. The cultural and social norms of this era in Mississippi, which were firmly rooted in white supremacist ideology, rationalized and maintained slavery. Caldwell displayed intelligence and leadership potential at an early age. Slaves looked up to him because of his future success in problem-solving and wise counsel-giving. The obstacles didn't stop Caldwell from achieving his goal of learning. Despite the hardships slaves faced, he managed to learn to read and write in secret. The more he learned, the more he wanted independence and equality from the plantation life. Clinton is a small hamlet west of Jackson, Mississippi, where he worked as a blacksmith as an adult. Because of their proficiency in making and fixing tools, farming implements and other hardware, blacksmiths were highly prized on the plantation. During his formative years in the 1840s and 1850s, Caldwell gained a deeper understanding of slavery's inherent injustice. He was highly esteemed in his society and had greater freedom than other slaves on the plantation because of his expertise as a blacksmith. The Fugitive Slave Act, a landmark law implemented in the 1850s, had a profound effect on Caldwell and other African Americans. The Compromise of 1850, which included this statute, was an effort to diffuse tensions between states that had legalized slavery and those that had not. If a runaway slave was discovered in a free state, their owner in a slave state was required by the Fugitive Slave Act to have them return to them. Anyone who helped slaves escape or obstructed their apprehension was likewise subject to harsh penalties under this law. This legislation effectively nationalized the issue by bringing slavery into the free states. Seeing loved ones sold into slavery was a particularly hard part of Caldwell's experience, as it was for many other slaves. Family ties and well-being were frequently disregarded while separating individuals at slave auctions. Not only were these auctions painful emotionally, but they also served as a sobering reminder of the power and independence that slaves did not have. An uprising's beginning. Black Americans, whether free or enslaved, were denied the ability to sue in federal court in a historic 1857 decision by the United States Supreme Court in the Dred Scott case, which established that they could not be citizens of the United States. For African Americans, this ruling was a devastating setback for the abolitionist movement. The amendment only served to strengthen Caldwell's resolve to fight against and seek reform. He saw the magnitude of the task and resolved to exert more effort in order to overcome the unjust system. Along with other slaves, Caldwell started attending clandestine gatherings where they plotted rebellion and counterattacks. Reading about slave revolts like Nat Turner's rebellion gave him hope that he could stand up for himself. Also having a significant impact on Caldwell was the 1852 novel Uncle Tom's Cabin, which detailed the plight of slaves. Reading the book further inflamed his desire to stand up against slavery, political rise after the Civil War. A turning point in Caldwell's life occurred after the end of the Civil War in 1865. Northern and Southern states fought each other fiercely throughout the American Civil War. Slavery, economic inequality, and power dynamics 
were all points of contention. The war was extremely difficult and lasted for four years. Slavery was abolished and the United States reunified as a nation after the North prevailed. He assumed a new position after being freed from slavery, one that would propel him to prominence in Mississippi politics. During the Reconstruction era that followed the Civil War, the United States rebuilt the South, reintegrated African Americans into society, and rethought its national character. While black Americans did make strides during this time, many problems, such as racial equality and economic inequality, remained unsolved. Caldwell recognized a chance to make a significant impact after the war ended and the Reconstruction era began. A new door was opening for African Americans in politics. Therefore, he wasted no time getting engaged. It was in 1868, during the Mississippi Constitutional Convention, that he initially became actively involved in politics. This was a pivotal moment, since it was at this meeting that the state's new statutes were drafted, outlining the rights of the recently liberated slaves and reinstituting the South's influence in the nation. Caldwell left an impression with his forceful and articulate statements during this conference. Regardless of color, he advocated for legislation that would guarantee equal rights and justice for all. Taking this stand was courageous, particularly in a place like Mississippi where hostilities between races were still strong, the infamous trial and acquittal. Another obstacle was in store for Caldwell in 1868. There were claims that he and the judge's son got into a shootout the son of the judge tragically lost his life during this altercation. This matter went to trial for Caldwell, and an all-white jury handed down their verdict. Racial tensions were particularly high during the time of his trial. He once remarked, This trial is not for my life alone, but for the dignity of every man born in chains. Despite the unjust circumstances, Caldwell had a solid defense, and the evidence was insufficient to convict him. The defense did more than only defend Caldwell's innocence. They also highlighted the wrongful usage of the justice system against African Americans. The all-white jury's decision to find Caldwell not guilty was surprising. This choice was revolutionary. The all-white jury's acquittal of the black man in the murder case was a rare occurrence in the South following the Civil War. A major victory for African Americans and a defeat for white racists Caldwell's release was widely celebrated. He made the following statement following the trial. Today, justice did not just win for one man, but for every soul striving for equality, becoming a part of the Mississippi Senate. Charles Caldwell's political career took a dramatic shift in December 1869, when Mississippi ratified a new constitution. In pursuit of a more substantial opportunity, he stepped down from his position on the Hines County Board of Police. Amazingly, for the period, he was elected to the Mississippi Senate as one of five black males, which was a watershed moment. Caldwell swiftly became known as a radical Republican during his five years serving in the Senate. Not only did he strongly endorse the cause, but he also cast a ballot in favor of several important legislative changes. He was so dedicated to equality and civil rights that he voted for the 14th and 15th Amendments. These amendments had a significant impact on the United States after the Civil War. Citizenship was extended to all individuals born or naturalized in the nation, including those who had been enslaved by the 14th Amendment. No person's right to vote should ever be infringed upon because of their race, color, or history of slavery. This was guaranteed by the 15th Amendment. Caldwell devoted much of his time in the Senate to fighting for African-American civil rights. In 1871, he backed a bill that established free public schools in Mississippi, reflecting his deep devotion to the cause. In his view, the key to his people's progress was education, Clinton riots. While in office, Caldwell vowed to do all in his power to stem the wave of violence against Republicans and black Mississippians. Anti-Reconstructionism was the driving force behind this bloodshed. White supremacist organizations, including the Ku Klux Klan, murdered hundreds of black people and a small number of white Republicans who backed Reconstruction from 1870 to 
to 1875. These were not indiscriminate, violent acts. A unified effort to perpetuate the pre-Civil War social order and white supremacy was behind it. A political process enthusiast, Caldwell took a risk in 1875. In the days leading up to the election, he enlisted the help of a prominent Democratic speaker to launch a massive Republican Party rally. What is now referred to as the Clinton Riot began as a tranquil celebration, but quickly descended into anarchy. At the height of the period's political and racial tensions, this riot was among the bloodiest incidents. Caldwell was in front of the state militia that Republican Governor Adelbert Ames summoned in reaction to the rising violence in Mississippi. Nevertheless, Governor Ames disbanded the militia in response to democratic pressure. Widespread voter intimidation and fraud marred the subsequent November elections, severely reversing the political gains achieved under Reconstruction. Murder of Caldwell. From the time he was first elected until the day of the elections, Caldwell was the target of numerous conspiracies and threats. He bravely came out on election day to cast his ballot despite the obvious threat to his life. That astonished and infuriated the Democrats even more. Democrats kept plotting against Caldwell because they still considered him a serious threat, despite his loss in the elections that day. They thought Caldwell and the opposition should not be permitted to move about. Senator Buck Campbell, a trusted friend of Caldwell's, was involved in their plot to lure him into a death trap so they could reach him. Campbell sent an invitation to Caldwell to a Christmas toast on Christmas Day, 1875. In response to the toast, the assassins opened fire, fatally wounding Caldwell. He begged to be taken outdoors one final time after realizing he had been misled, and he said he should be remembered as a heroic guy. He was wounded multiple times before he succumbed to his injuries. No one was ever brought to justice for his demise, despite an investigation that was later included in a broader congressional report. The jury decided that there wasn't enough proof to convict the killer since there wasn't enough evidence. Despite the hatred and prejudice he endured throughout his life, Caldwell never stopped fighting for black men's equality. White Democrats wanted to have him killed because he was daring and fearless and refused to give in to threats. Despite his untimely demise, his impact endured and his aspirations were eventually fulfilled. Caldwell and his fight for African-American emancipation are completely absent from today's history textbooks. But his tale has to be told so that others may be inspired to fight for equality and so that they may see how a single man's resolve can bring about tremendous change. So that is it for today. Please subscribe, share and comment below if you found today's video inspiring and informative.